Hey everyone, Talking Dave over here, the dorky talking black guy that's just trying to get by. And welcome to my first edition of Comic Book Character Origins. Here, I explain the origins of a superhero or villain directly from the source comic book material, having little to do with whatever you see in the movies or on the TV. And I cannot think of with two weeks ago, the trailer dropped, and I cannot think of a better way to kick off comic book character origins than with the first black superhero in the Marvel Universe. And I'm talking about the King of Wakanda, T'Challa, a.k.a. the Black Panther. Now, before I begin, you know, this is going, I'm going to do his first appearance and his origins combined, all right? I am not going to go into as much detail because, as you can see, I'm in a different backdrop. And next video, I'll explain why I'm in that backdrop, all right? But anyway, <clears throat> so the issue starts off with, you know, with the Fantastic Four receiving an invitation from T'Challa, you know, to partake in a great hunt. And one of the representatives from Wakanda approached the Fantastic Four with this message along with a fancy hovercraft, you know, which is like unremarkable and unbelievable to Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, because, you know, this is a time period where almost everyone sees Africa as like, you know, and still does the Africa as a continent that's it missed in poverty and everything and doesn't have anything advanced with them. So before they go to Wakanda in that hovercraft, they actually go nearby to Metro College, Metro College, not, not Empire State College, you know, Empire State College is a little different, you know, anyway, they go to Metro College where Johnny Storm, AKA the Human Torch is, and he's taking part in his studies. And while they pick him up, Johnny asks if they could bring his roommate, White Wingfoot, along. Especially since they're going on a hunt and White himself is of Native American heritage. And, you know, gets excited and is thrilled on going on hunts and loves hunting. Yeah, a bit stereotypical at that time, but guys, this is the 60s. What can I say? <clears throat> anyway, you know, uh... T'Challa, like, you know, hears word that basically the Fantastic Four are on their way, and T'Challa himself is like, you know, is, is basically looking around, and he's like, excellent, making sure everybody has everything in place for the hunt, revealing that, you know, basically the Fantastic Four are not aware that the hunt that they're taking place in is that they are the ones that are being hunted by the Black Panther, which the Fantastic Four quickly realize when they're dropped off in Wakanda. And one by one, each of the Fantastic Four is defeated by the Black Panther. And the one thing that Panther did not take account for is White Wingfoot being around. And White himself actually frees the Fantastic Four. And, you know, they all together gang up on T'Challa, defeating him. Being defeated, T'Challa removes his mask, revealing that basically he himself is the Black Panther, and he organizes Hunt for a particular reason. So that was the end of the first issue. This issue is when we get into T'Challa's origins. Now, with basically, you know, after getting his butt kicked by the Fantastic Four, and still being the King of Wakanda, T'Challa extends his hospitality to the five that are there and you know they partake in a celebration a celebrate celebratory dance of friendship and everything and they go into a different area T'Challa's private chambers or private chambers revealing like basically like you know all of the advanced technology that T'Challa does have and further explain to Reed Richards you know basically that <clears throat> His country is actually technologically advanced and very rich and everything. And, you know, Benjamin Grimm and The Thing, a.k.a., you know, who is being a bit of a dick in this, you know, is saying that, oh, well, like, basically, I would, you know, I'm assuming that, you know, a king like you would have something fancy and everything because you're the king, you know, compared to the other people we have probably not even seen. And... He explains that, yes, like some of the areas are not as advanced or as developed, but he's able to basically maintain 
their uh, what you would call traditional living lineage and everything because that is how the Wakandans do. They make sure that like, you know, the common people and everything, you know, will live close to the earth to be able to like maintain their roots while he and the Royal Guard himself frequently interact on behalf of their people, you know, unlike, you know, other countries where the people up top like are separated from the actions of the daily people, he has to directly and personally himself be among the people. And as well, he points out that a lot of things that are in his chambers are overly expensive. And this is due to the fact that they are the ones that actually contain and their sole export and natural resource is vibranium, Captain America shield. And then the child explains that basically, you know, the reason he challenged them in the first place is because 10 years ago, as a kid, you know, he, there, was a ex, there was an explorer named uh, Eusilius Claw who came down to Wakanda and tried to steal all the vibranium which was in a particular area of the country. And T'Chaka and some of the soldiers went against Ulysses Claw and Claw brutally murdered his, his father and some of the soldiers with T'Challa himself being there only as a 10 year old boy. Well, T'Challa, T'Challa then notices that one of Claw's men has this weird sonic gun and everything and the 10 year old picks up the gun and uses it against the, uh, what you call the, the explorers and you know, he actually like not only defeats most of them, but as well cripples Claw's right hand, you know, so Claw loses that hand. And T'Challa explains that he challenged the Fantastic Four to see if his abilities that he's practiced all these years, his martial arts training, his hunting, his hunting training, his education, since he's been in the finest schools all across the, all across the globe and, you know, is, has like five PhDs all in different realms of science. So T'Challa himself wanted to test himself against the Fantastic Four to see if he'll ever be ready to challenge Claw when Claw returns. And in the meantime, while explaining these origins to the Fantastic Four, some weird things are happening in Wakanda. Like a giant gorilla attacks as well as a giant elephant. However, both of these things are not only giant, but they're in red. And we discover later on, while they're rampaging through the village, that basically these things are actually not, even though they're physically doing damage, they're not physically real. They are part of something that Claw has sent out to attack the village and everything, signaling his return. So the Fantastic Four and the Black Panther go up to the, go up to the gorilla and try to take it on, and Black Panther realizes... Yes, this is definitely the work of Claw because that as red as it is, it's basically something to do with like, you know, these sound waves that are secretly found in a mountain where most of the vibranium is. Just go along with it. You know, it doesn't make sense to be honest with you, but hey, comic books. Anyway, seeing this, T'Challa like, you know, leaves a Fantastic Four to fight off that giant gorilla, you know, which, you know, after T'Challa leaves, the giant gorilla does evaporate. However, the giant elephant is still plummaging through the village, while T'Challa finds, like, you know, Claw is in the same vicinity of that, um, the mountain where the vibranium is kept, and he, and Claw, just, and Claw actually shows that, oh, so it's you, Black Panther, you must be that, um, kid that I tried to, that I tried to kill a few years ago that basically destroyed my arm, which, well not his arm, but his hand, which Claw reveals that, like, you know, he has, like, you know, this sonic gun on his hand and everything, and he goes to encounter Black Panther, which Black Panther, like, you know, sees that Claw has this machine that, like, you know, like, harnesses sound waves, you know, because that's what Claw actually used to not only kill his father, but what was using to actually try to siphon the vibranium because the vibranium is sensitive to sound and everything. So that's how Claw discovered the vibranium and discovered how it's in Wakanda in the first place. Black Panther fights off Claw, destroys his machine and everything, 
and makes the last elephant disappear as well as brings down the um, claws lair on him and T'Challa believes that like you know claws finally been defeated now he like he doesn't really have to be the Black Pan as such advanced as the Black Panther anymore and Fantastic Four tells him that just because you defeated your main enemy there are more to come and that you know you can't confine yourself to Wakanda the whole world needs someone like you and this convinces T'Challa to go out to the world and try to see what other forces he can actually like stop and prevent from attacking his country so those are basically the origins I had to skip a lot of things and not go into too much detail because basically um I'll explain in my next video since I'm not home right now but if you have any if you agree or disagree or have any additional comments drop them below give this video a like spread this video out subscribe and ring that bell so you'll immediately be notified when a new video loads but until then this has been token dave the dorky token black guy just trying to get by and i'll catch you guys later